today's video is going to focus on <laughs> to help people who are me. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Michael. Today's video is going to focus on houseplant care tips for beginners. So, you ready to dig in? Let's grow. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you for stopping by, and I also want to send out my thanks to all the folks who have subscribed, who have left comments, and liked our videos. We really appreciate it. So, now, without further ado, let's go over tip number one. You want to choose the right plant for your home. You want to make sure you do a little bit of research and find out a plant that you want to, to invest in, in your home. You don't want to take on something that's known to be high maintenance. These plants before you, we have found, are very good for beginners. They're quite low maintenance, and I'll give you a brief introduction of these guys. And by the way, we have videos of all these plants, in-depth videos of all these plants, so you can refer back to our channel if you decide to get one of these, and you can learn from, uh, from what we have in that video on how to take care of your plant. So what, what I'm gonna start with is the one in front, this cute little one here. This is a snake plant. She's called the Fernwood, and she, she's a very slow growing, a uh, plant, she just keeps a very small size, so this is a great plant if you have a small place in your home. To, to my left, your right, is the ZZ Raven. Love this plant, super cool, super low maintenance, very exotic if you want a jungle vibe in your home. She's, she's your girl, she is your girl, so pretty. Behind her is the Taniki. This is the Ficus Taniki. These are low maintenance and if you put them in and do the right things, um, and we'll go into that in a little bit, but we all, we've done videos on these, and, we, and you can see in many of our videos, we have a Taniki behind us that she's just digging all that light. These, these tend to want a little bit more light. But this is a very, very tough plant if you just do the right things when you're maintaining her. Next to her and below is the Hoya Curtisii. Oh, she got her all cut up in the tricolor. Such a cool plant. Such a cool plant. It trails, so you want to make sure you give her room to to uh, to grow. But she is really, really, really low maintenance and a wonderful plant for your home. We have a larger one uh, in a basket over here, and she tra is trailing down. It looks like green rain. So, so pretty. Next to the, the Hoya Cortesii is the Hoya Tricolor, the Crimson Queen. She is a beauty, and she's flowering for you all. Look at her. She's so pretty. Oh, just love this plant. Super low maintenance. Super low maintenance. You do need to watch out for, for, for mealybugs, but this is a very, very tough plant. And, it, and she's wonderful. She has this wonderful cascading effect as she, she trails down. Wonderful plant for beginners. Now, one of my all-time faves, and you know from some of our videos, those of you who've been watching our videos, I have a lot of faves, but this, oh, come on. She's so cute. This is the Oxalis, the purple shamrock. Oh, and we have the green shamrock over here that we have in the background, you probably can see. I don't know if we're crowding her out, but both of these are just great. We weren't sure uh, a few years ago, I don't know how many years now it's been, uh, when we first picked her up. We picked her up before we picked up the greens, and it's been many years. And she, we were concerned because this plant can go dormant, both of them. Ours, we live in Miami, by the way, for those of you who aren't familiar with our channel, we tend to get a lot more light being closer to the equator, and these plants are known to go dormant at, at certain periods of the time, and, and we have not found ours to do that except once. This one kind of went dormant for a while and then bounced back, and ever since for year, year in and year out, she's never dropped all of her leaves. She'll throttle back her leaves, and then she'll grow out again. That's a normal characteristic of this plant. If yours goes in, and goes dormant, just be aware that she'll come bouncing back but it's a house plant that flowers for you. I mean, come on, these beautiful lavender flowers. So pretty. Oh, one of my all time faves. And these wiggly leaves. I mean, you can't, I mean, come on. That is just, nature is so amazing. That's so cute. Oh, love the purple shamrock. And over, bouncing one over to my, to my right, your left, is the furry feather calathea. Calatheas in general don't tend to be, we have found, don't tend to be very low maintenance and not something we would recommend for a houseplant, but the furry feather 
and actually the network plant, and I don't know if you can see her, but we'll, we'll, we'll zoom in so you can see her up close. Those calatheas we have found are quite low maintenance. There's some, there's some burning of the tips of the, of, the, of the plants because of humidity and, and moisture issues sometimes with the plant, but they bounce right back and they, and they look full all the time. And a little bit of this, that's just, that's just nature. It's just her doing, just her doing her thing, but it's very, very pretty. It has this wonderful purple uh, velvety feel on, on her underside of her leaves, all these little tiny hairs very similar in color to the purple shamrock. Really pretty plant. And it's, you know, it's got this neat upright, very dense. So this is a really cool conversation piece too. I don't, I don't think there's anything that beats the, the, the oxalis here. The, the ZZ close, but this is, this is definitely a conversation piece if you want to plant that you want to have uh, as a statement and you want to start, start strong with a plant. This is a really cool plant. Uh, over here is the Bonnie, the Curly Q spider plant. Very tough plant as well. This plant is also, these two actually are very, very good at, at uh, collecting volatile organic compounds out of the air. These harmful gases that are known to be in homes. And these are great at being like a HEPA filter, a natural HEPA filter for your home. So it's, those are really, really cool plants. So now that I've touched base on all of them, these are good choices. But when you're, and going back to point number one or tip number one is you wanna choose the right plant. So find out what you want to do in your home and don't go crazy, just try to start out with what I recommend and see how it goes. And if one of these fits your needs, you can do that. You can also look back on our channel. We have other plants that are very, very hardy that we've done videos on. Pothos comes to mind. That's a great starter plant, probably one of the top, toughest house plants uh, and one of the best ones to recommend for a beginner. But they're, they're very common, but these, these are not as much as common. It's definitely the, the oxalis is less common. So tip number two is to check your plant's leaves to make sure there's no damage to the to the stem or to, to any or any major damage, let me say that because you, you'll see some some normal discoloration sometimes when you buy a plant that may be a little cut or or something that's uh, been healing over. That's that's okay, but you don't want to see you don't want to see any major damage to the stems. You don't want to see any drooping leaves, wilting leaves. That's something that that, that it's indicative of a, of a problem with your plant. So you don't want to start with a problem bringing a plant into your home. So you also want to check to make sure that you don't see any bugs growing on the leaves or or, or in the nose along along the stems of your plant. That that also will be a major problem for you if you bring home a pest. It'll, it, it's going to make it's going to make it all that much harder to take care of your plant. So that's that's tip number two. You want to check the leaves and the stems of your plant to make sure that they're nice and healthy and they look they look good. Tip number three is to check the roots of your plant. When you're going to buy your plant, you want to make sure you check the roots before you pay for her. So what you'll do is you'll take the plant at the nursery and pull her out of the grow pot she's in. So gently try to you know, grab her by the, the base of, of her stems and pull her up gently out of the grow pot. And you want to look and see if the roots are well formed around the plant. You don't want to see overcrowded roots because that, that could mean that the plant should have been up pited and you can have some circling roots and that can be an issue. But, but if you see nice, healthy roots develop, that's a good sign that your plant is going to be very, it's going to do very, very well in your home. So another thing to check with your soil is to see if it's the right type of soil for your plant. A, a succulent or a cactus will want a much more well-drained type of soil, so it's going to be an airier potting mix. And some other plants that are more tropical that want a little bit more moisture are going to have more of a loamy mix. So you want to make sure that you can, and as best as you can, if you're a beginner, you may not know so much about that, but you want to make sure that you don't see any dry or cracked soil. That, that's indicative of someone who didn't use the right mix. One side note that I want to mention is that there's also a soilless medium out there, LECA, that some growers or some plant, plant shops are selling plants uh, in that medium. And that's a, that's a clay pebble in, in our, our Hoya tricolor here and our Curtisii, they're grown in LECA. And sometimes when you're getting rooted cuttings, you can get, you can get uh, those plants uh, from the mail and you can readily adapt them into a semi-hydroponic uh, way of growing. The, actually our Tanikis here, these guys are grown in LECA. And that's these clay pebbles. And if you choose to go with a semi-hydroponic like LECA and growing for your houseplant, you can refer to our channel because we've done several videos to that effect on growing plants and a semi-hydroponic LECA. And now on to tip number four. You want to place your plant in the right location in your home. You don't want to put a plant that, that tends to get large on a, on a corner or somewhere where you'll, you'll bonk into the leaves. I have, I have bounced into our, to our 
fiddly fig so many times and I, I should have put her further away from a corner and that's that's a problem right and you, so you, so one thing I want to impart with you is that you want to make sure you put your plant where they're not you're not going to constantly be brushing up against it or it's near a door or, or a drawer because we've done this with some of our potos in our bathroom is that when you close a drawer you can close and crush a leaf so you want to make sure you place your plant in the right area of your home that you have the room for her to fill out and not not get banged up by and get mechanical damage from from people brushing up against her tip number five is to provide the right amount of lighting for your particular plant the fernwood for example doesn't need a lot of light this can do well between 150 to 500 foot candles the, the taniki over here wants more, wants closer to a thousand. So you're gonna have to make sure you understand, and again, you can refer back to our channel. We've done videos and we have written in-depth instructions on the light needs for your plant. So you wanna kind of understand the lighting needs of the plant. You can ask your grower if you're picking up a plant that, that's not uh, here or not on our channel and ask them what type of lighting that, that they recommend. Now we go by University of Florida IFAS scale of low, medium, and high, and we've done videos on that, we've done a quick tip video on that, so you can see that the ranges of low, medium, and high, high light, by and large, a lot of plants can handle high light, between 500 and 1,000 foot candles, and that's going to be close to a west-facing window, or very close to a north-facing window if you're here in South Florida, between 500 and 1,000 foot candles a day, and the plants are going to do well, but one thing, one, one thing that's very important is that some plants don't want any direct sun, they, some of them can have it right at sunset, but before that, they can scorch and burn your plant, and then that puts you back. So you want to be, you want to make sure that you provide the right amount of lighting for your plant. It's super important. Now, step six is very important as well, and that's on watering. You want to make sure you don't overwater your plant. That's probably the biggest takeaway I want you out of all these 10, 10 tips is do not overwater your plant. Overwatering will cause root rot and a whole host of other problems. That's probably what I've noticed over the many years I've been doing this. So many people would come come to work or, or they'd show me their plant and it's just 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 gooey mess. And that's because people baby their plant too much. They water it every day or a little bit every day. You just want to water your plant as for what it needs are. So on, on the oxalis, it's going to want a little bit more water than the fern would. Snake plants are notoriously miserly with their water. So, so is the ZZ Raven. They don't need a lot of water. They can go weeks without water. This one would want water a little bit more. So same thing with the, the, uh, the furry feather calathea. But each plant's gonna have their own needs. Semi-hydroponics, the Leca is a totally different beast because it has a water reservoir in these clay pebbles. And that's a totally different growing medium with a to totally different uh, um, set of needs. But on, for soil growing, and that's what I'm speaking to, is you don't want to overwater. That's the main takeaway. And if that's anything you get out of this video today, that's the one thing is do not overwater. The next, if you want to check your plant to see if you've watered her too much or too little, you can just simply take a skewer or a chopstick and drill her down into the plant. And let's say this is, you know, this has gone a week after you've watered and you want to see if she's still holding a lot of moisture. And you can leave it in there for, for a, about a minute or so to see if any, any um, moisture or any soil sticks to the to the edge of the skewer or the chopstick. And if you're getting a lot of, there we go, look at that. If you're getting a lot of soil sticking to the plant, that's that's telling you there's moisture. And, and, and up close, I don't know if you'll see, we'll probably zoom in. There'll, there'll be some discoloration on the, on, the, on the skewer here. So it shows that there's moisture deep down into the pot. And so you can hold off on the water. You don't necessarily need to water. Now, if you, if you put the, the skewer in and it comes back relatively clean and not very damp to the touch, or you could use your pinky on the bigger plants. You can drill your finger down two knuckle with all the two knuckle rule and dr drill it down in there. If your finger comes back and you feel a lot of moisture on it, you know that the plant has still got moisture in the soil. You don't necessarily need to water. You can maybe wait a day or so. So this is a really cool little little plant hack that, that many people I'm sure have, have mentioned, but we, we like using the skewers because it's small, it's easy to get in there. And you can also use a chopstick or your finger. And that's, um, that's very helpful in, in getting a real test of the soil. Because sometimes when you touch the top of the soil, it feels like it's, it's dry and you want to add water, but just an inch or so below, there's plenty of moisture. And again, like I said, you don't want to overwater plants. That's the, the main takeaway here. Okay, now we're on tip number seven. You want to use chlorine-free water. You can use just regular tap water, but let it sit out for 48 hours to allow the chlorine to evaporate out. If you don't do that and you use tap water, 
most plants will do fine, but we have found that the spider plant, the bonnie, that you can see some tips here. If you don't leave it out long enough, they can get a little brown. They'll, they will brown, and that's, the, that's, showing, that's showing some chlorine damage. And it's also happening here on the, the uh, furry, furry uh, feather calathea. That's, that's, a, that's a problem that some of the plants have, and chlorine is not typically, uh, plants don't typically want to use that. It's not a nutrient for them. So by setting your water out for 48 hours, that chlorine evaporates, and then you can go and water your plants. Okay, now for tip number eight. That's on providing the right amount of fertilizer for your plant. We have several that we use for, for our plants. You know, a bloom booster for some of our flowering plants. We also have a, this is our orchid special. And we've done, we, we have other, uh, other types of fertilizers that we use for our plants, both inside and outside. But for house plants, you want to typically add fertilizer, the right amount of fertilizer, at the right amount, at the right time of the year. So typically plants down here in South Florida or most places in the world where you're going into the spring and summer months, we have longer duration of sunlight or light coming into our home. And that's when our plants tend to grow more. So that's when you can add the fertilizer. Typically from like April to, from, so, so from, from spring, April through September, it's pretty much a guide of, of a time that the plants can have fertilizer. It's safer to under fertilize, like do it half strength than to over fertilize. If you over fertilize a plant, you can burn the roots and then your plant suffers. So if you look at what the instructions are for, for adding a liquid fertilizer, and that's what we typically do for our plants is, is add liquid fertilizer and we add it to our watering schedule, but we, we, but we throttle back in the winter months because our plants aren't growing that much. Some plants we have seen it do pretty well in the winter time, we, we, will, we will add some fertilizer, but they're not, they really don't need that much because they're not growing as robustly. So, tip number nine is to make sure that you are properly maintaining your plant. You want to periodically check on your plant to make sure that they're growing okay. Like if, uh, if you see that your plant is lopsided because maybe it's, it's growing towards a window, rotate the plant. So let it grow a few months and then rotate. But if your plant, definitely the oxalis, they tend to grow very quickly. These are, these are very active plants. They close your leaves at night and open up in the morning. These will leave quite quickly and you want to turn your plant and rotate them so you get a well-balanced look throughout the year. You don't want to have a lopsided plant if you can help if you can help it. Actually, some of our tanikis were growing on the west and they grew so fast with a spurt that they started to lean in, so we had to turn them. So, so we want to make sure that you rotate them. You can do that uh, depending on the plant. If it's a slow-growing plant, you can wait a couple months to rotate, but if it's a faster-growing plant, you may want to rotate every month just a little bit so that the plant gets a well-rounded look. So that's that's a, a, an important thing is, on, uh, is to make sure that you're giving your plant that, that right amount of light all the way around the plant. The other thing you want to check is to make sure there's no pests on your plant. You want to make sure you don't see any, any scale or mealybugs, you know, definitely with the Hoyas, that's one thing that, that attacks the tricolor is the mealybugs. You want to make sure that you, 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 you check your plants to see if there are any bugs or some, some issues where there's any black spots or brown spots, that could be a fungus issue. So you, you, can, you can go and address it before it gets worse. And one more thing with maintenance is on some of your plants, you may want to dust them or take a damp cloth to remove any buildup of residues and stuff on there. Definitely the, the taniki will get that in the ZZ, which is good because it's not only, they're actually acting as a HEPA filter, they're collecting you know, uh, particles in the air, little you know, fibers and dust bunnies and stuff, and they're, they're holding them on their leaves, but, it, but that affects their ability to do photosynthesis. So it's good to wipe them down occasionally. Some other plants, we don't tend to have to do it that much. The, uh, the furry feather and the oxalis tend to be relatively clean because of the, of the structure of the leaf and the way the way they they, they grow. The the hoyas, the tricolor has got a waxy leaf, and so it, it doesn't tend to stay so much on the hoyas. Although the zizi has a waxy leaf too, but it does tend to to have a little more crenation in the in the leaf structure that it tends to grab dust. So that's that's one thing you want to do is just make sure that you just kind of just dust or, or or gently wipe off your plant from time to time. You don't have to do it every month or every other month, but just once in a while to make sure your plant is not getting covered with, uh, with dust. And tip number 10 is to make sure that you uppot your plant when she outgrows her container. You don't want to have any circling roots for soil grown plants because that, that's going to that's gonna curtail the plant's ability to, to properly grow. So once you notice that the roots are very, very full in your container, you can decide to uppot it. Now on the container you uppot into, that's important to know too. You can, for cactus and others, you can up pot into a terracotta container and then put her in a, in a ceramic. You can put, you know, put her in a terracotta container inside another 
decorative container, and the terracotta container should have a hole at the bottom to allow water to drain through, but the terracotta will also absorb water out and wick it away from, the, from inside the pot, which is good for some kind of succulents and cactus. So it's, you want to choose more of a terracotta plant for, for those plants that want more dry, and for other more tropical plants, you can use a plastic container with, again, drain holes at the, at the bottom, but you just want a, a larger container for, for your plant to grow in. Now, for speaking of the spider plant, if I may talk a little side note there on that, spider plants are a little bit different. They tend to like the soil to be a little bit more crowded and the roots can get very jumbled in there. That's a one-off type of a thing. That's, a, that's indicative of the spider plant. We have found that, that it'll tend to shoot more babies out there. You can always up pot them and they'll continue to grow. But if you, if you curtail that uh, pot, uh, the roots will get very, very full in there and they'll get very dense. That's okay. Um, and, and they'll send, they tend to send out more babies, a little offshoots, which is kind of cool. So that's just one thing I wanted to, to, to note with you on that. And there you have it. That's our 10 houseplant care tips for beginners. If you have any thoughts or questions, please just leave them down in the comment section below. And until the next video, bye. Bye. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And tell your friends and family. We post videos weekly. Thanks.